I don't think organizations do enough to truly understand why they lose deals. Most of us, if, especially if you're a founder and you lose a deal, we have this kind of complex that's like, hey, you just didn't see the value. You're an idiot. That's not why you lost the deal, right? We've got to own the reasons and own the, hey, if I was able to spin the world backward, what would I do differently here? Right. And if we can't answer that question, then maybe we need to look at the profile of the individual and the company and their circumstances and understand that, hey, companies that look like this, that have this going on, are not a good fit for us. We should lead with it. If we have, if they're an inbound and say, hey, listen, over and over again, companies like yours and individuals like you, here's what you don't like about us. Now, if that's you, cool, let's part as friends and I'll get you into the right direction. If it's not you, let's keep talking. Yeah. That transparency becomes so powerful, but you got to celebrate the losses for the lessons that can be learned and embrace what you give up to be great at your core. The best marketers do that. And I think it's such an opportunity to stand out and be the best. And that you know, something that I preach a lot about. I mean, you, you know, I'm a big fan of using video from a personal context to get the message out there. And I'm a big fan of shouting about who my ideal customers are, who they're not. And I advise all my clients to do the same thing, you know, talk about yep. who's a good fit, who's not a good fit and why, and just air that out for everybody to see in a non-confrontational way. Just be honest about it and just, just get it out there so that you can concentrate on the conversations that matter because those people might go, huh, this guy's not for me. Exactly. I, hope he'd, I hoped he was, but he's not clearly. I'm going to move on to the next guy, but I might still recommend him because I like his style. Yeah. Well, can I add one thing that just happened to me a little bit ago? And don't just, when you said, I hope you're a fit, I had the CRO of a multi-billion dollar company reach out to me. Actually, his admin reached out and was like, hey, he wants to talk to you about doing some training in here. And I'm like, wow, that's a big, like I get all excited, yeah. right? To get the endorphins going. I get on the phone with this guy and uh, he starts by saying, hey, Todd, I, I wanted to reach out. I've heard great things about you. Um, we, we want to bring you in and do some training. And then he starts sharing, uh, what his objection or objectives are. Like we start digging into that. Like what, what are the kind of the top of mind thing that you need some help with? And it was cold calling, social selling, top of funnel stuff. Okay. I could do it, but I'm not the best at it. So my answer was literally this, Hey, uh, that sounds like a great priority that you have. And I, I'm, I'm with you. There's a lot of companies that have that. I could train that, but if you made a list of the top 50 people that do it, I'd come in at about number 47. Uh, I know of two or three people that are fantastic at it that I would love to make the recommendations for. You'd like, you should go there. This guy looked at me like, that's awesome. I would love those names. Like he was so excited about it, but then he was like, what is it you focus on? Like, where's your area? And I, so I took them through it. Like this transparency stuff is non-traditional. Your messaging, your positioning, the buying journey that you take customers on. And then the popular thing that I teach is transparent negotiating, right? Which is probably a topic for another day. But we ended up at the end of the conversation, I made the connection and he brought me in and we're still doing programs for his team on transparent negotiating. Because he realized negotiating. he needed both. Right. So 